In this lesson, we are going to learn about inductive and deductive reasoning. Both of them are extremely powerful tools, but they have different applications. Inductive reasoning is what we use every day to learn. We look for patterns, recognize them, repeat them, and through that process we learn language, we learn athletic skills, so on and so forth. It's very good for solving problems like this cute little number here, and it is extremely intuitive. Because of that, let's jump right in and do some examples. In this first example, A, B, D, E, A, B, D, E, A, B, geez, I wonder what follows B. Well, inductive reasoning takes us back and says, hey, B was followed by D. Hey, look, here's another B. It was also followed by a D. So if we end here on B, geez, we should come up with D. Inductive reasoning sees the pattern, repeats it. Number two is a little bit harder to see. Some people might say, geez, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is not 3. Huh. Well, um, maybe it's multiplication, because 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 3... No, that's also not working. In reality, this is called the Fibonacci sequence. Look it up. Wonderful, powerful applications in mathematics and life. And the way we derive the next term is by adding the previous two terms. Notice that 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. So our next term is going to be 3 plus 5, which is 8. Here's another way that inductive reasoning can be helpful. Notice that there's not a pattern here with number 3. The question is asking, how many regions are in a circle with 20 diameters? We could always draw a circle with 20 diameters, but that could get cumbersome. Or we could look at a pattern. Here's a circle. I'll draw in one diameter. And notice that with one diameter, I get two regions. Here's another circle. This time I'll draw in two diameters. And look, there are now four regions with two diameters. If I draw in three diameters, are you seeing a pattern yet? And with three diameters, there are six total regions. Can you make a prediction with four? Lo and behold, we get eight regions. So the pattern is quite simple after seeing that. One times two is two. Two times two is four. 3 times 2 is 6, and 4 times 2 is 8. So therefore, if we take our 20 diameters and multiply it by 2, it tells us that we'll have 40 regions. So inductive reasoning can be used by looking at patterns and making predictions down the road. Here's the next one. We're going back to the A, B, D, E, but instead of just the next number, it wants the 99th term. So a lot of people will just react by going A, B, D, E, A, B, D, E, A, B, D, E, until they get to the 99th term. That would become cumbersome. However, notice that E is in the fourth position. On the next row, it's in the eighth position. On the next row, the twelfth position. What do you notice about each of these numbers? These are the multiples of 4. So E is always in a position that's a multiple of 4. But then you say, wait a minute, we're asked for the 99th term. The 99 isn't a multiple of 4. But guess what is? 100. Of course, that means that E is the 100th term. And the 99th term is just before the 100th term. So the 99th term is going to be D. Okay, so in a situation like this, you can make a prediction well into the future by noticing, hey, there's four terms. Multiple of four will always be that fourth term. Find the closest multiple of four and count forward or backward. If it's five terms, multiple of five. If it's three terms, multiple of three. Do you get the idea? We also do this with graphs quite frequently. 
you'll notice here in this graph the company selling widgets and you'll notice that in January they started off at 17,000 then the next month they sold about 9,000 more then 11,000 more then 8,000 more then another 11,000 more so if you look at that they're selling roughly about 10,000 more widgets each month which tells us that in June they should sell about 66,000 and in July about 76,000. This is great, but there are some troubles with inductive reasoning. And that is that it's based on observations and it's impossible to observe every possible event. So therefore, inductive reasoning can only help make reasonable predictions. It cannot guarantee the predictions are correct. Okay, so here are some examples where inductive reasoning won't be helpful. Let's go back to the circles, but instead of being asked how many regions there are, what's the color of the next circle? Now some people say, well, that's simple. It's, the pattern starts over, so we go to green. But other people will say no, because the magenta follows the orange, when in reality, the next circle might be blue. So inductive reasoning doesn't help if there's no established pattern. Another instance when inductive reasoning doesn't work, let's go back to the widgets. But in this case, instead of just the next month or maybe two months ahead, let's go four months ahead, September. Well, if the pattern holds, we can predict that there will be about 96,000 widgets sold. If the pattern holds. The problem is, when we're talking about four or five months in advance, does the pattern have to hold? In this case, you can see that it didn't hold, and they definitely did not sell 96,000 widgets. So the second problem with inductive reasoning is that things can change, the pattern can change, and if it does change, there's no guarantees that the predictions will work. Now it's your turn to try a few questions.